Hey, how's it going? And I just wanted to do a quick update to the tutorial I just did on the blend space. One thing I noticed was that there was some overlap. We come over here, there was some overlap. I guess I can hit my main character. You can see it on the main character here. See the overlap with the hands going into the thighs? See that? I didn't catch that at first, so unless they have some kind of special leg, that's kind of weird, right? There's a couple different ways you can try to fix that. So I'll just show you what I did was I went into the blend space. Let me, I have to go into here. I went into the blend space here. You have to hit control to see the whole animation. And all I did was I just adjusted the arms here, the upper arm and the forearm so they're not colliding. And then what I did is once I did that, I just re-recorded out an animation. Basically what I did is I merged the blend space into a, its own animation, which I called new animation. So I just recorded out a new animation where it's not colliding. And then once that's done, then what we could do is, I'll, I'll show you what I did. So then once I have that an new animation 2 done, there's a couple different ways you could do it. But in this particular model, let's say I go to the blueprint here and I drag on a new one. So this is going to be robot 14. I could do it one of two ways. I could actually just come in here and go use animation ad set and just select the new animation that I rendered out where it's not colliding. And if I come over here, you can see the, the player. It's, I might have to make a little adjustment, but you see they're not colliding now. The hands aren't really clean. I guess maybe the left one is a little tiny bit. So I could tweak that, but it's not overlapping as bad as it was. You see that? It's a lot better. And depending on the angle of the camera, you might not notice it at all. So that's one way to do it. If I'm just strictly interested in filming this animation, right? The other thing you can do is if we is we could make a level sequence and do it as a level sequence too. So let's say this character, let me get a let me actually get a different. Well, I guess I can leave it. I can leave this one selected. So let me just go into the content level here and I'll right click and I'll go to cinematics and I'll create a level sequence right here and I'll double click into it. And then on the track, I'll select that robot 14. And then I'll add animation here, animation, and I can add it here as well and do it as a level sequence. So it could also play as a level sequence, the, the same animation. The only thing is that when you get the level sequence, you just have to remember a couple things. One is that you have to drag it into the scene and then you want to put it on autoplay. And one of these, Anna, one of these is on that, I forget which one it is. It's this one over here is a level sequence, but it's just playing one time. So I don't have it. I don't have it looping, but that one right there, it goes back into T pose. So like if I select this one, I don't know which level sequence it is. It might be this one. I don't think I have it set to loop. So I got to go to level sequence one. I believe that's it. And see, I have it on don't loop. So I can set it on loop indefinitely. And then that should just keep playing it. So there's a couple different ways to do it. So now let's see how it's looping continuously. So that's another way. And it looks like I'd still have to adjust the, the left hand maybe a little bit. There's some overlap there. But that's how you could solve that problem of the hands going into the thigh. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful, and I'll do another tutorial in just a little bit about other ways that you can combine animations as well. So the way I showed during the blend space, that's just one way. So anyway, take care, and I'll talk to you later.